I guarantee that shoulder pain you feel is actually fixable. And if you do everything I'm about to tell you in this video, we'll have you back to training like an asshole in no time. And before you say that's complete bull, because you remember exactly how it happened, you were sitting on your hand trying to get it numb so you could perform the stranger on yourself, and you must have sat on a little too long because you got one tug in and you heard a pop in your shoulder. There's no way to fix that. Here's the thing. You're wrong. To be able to fix your shoulder problem, you need to first fully understand how your shoulder joint works. That way you can identify every potential thing that could go wrong and rule them out one by one. Because your glenohumeral joint is phenomenal and probably what your mom meant when she said you're special because you're not, but that joint is. It allows for abduction, adduction, flexion, extension, and internal and external rotation. But there's so many things that have to work in conjunction for that to happen. The glenoid fossa, the socket of your shoulder joint that's located on the lateral side of your scapula, cups the balls of your humeral heads. It's your first form of stability for your shoulder, and it's 100% unique to you. Some people have a deep and cavernous groove for that ball to sit in, while others have a shallower fossa that only slightly cups the balls. Which is fine as long as the four muscles that make up your rotator cuff do their job because their tendons actually help form a capsule around the joint and it keeps that humeral head within millimeters of the center of the socket of your scapula at all times. No matter what dumb shit you do with your arm, it cradles that ball just right. This is actually a horrible example because the tendons, like I said, fuse into a capsule around the joint. So the Ethiopian kid that made this did a shit job, but who am I to complain? At his age, I was struggling with macaroni art. In my defense, it wasn't my fault. They only gave me enough glue to eat, not to make a fucking Picasso. Here's a great way to visualize everything that's going on with your shoulder. Think of this stripper pole as your humerus. The floor is acting as your scapula socket. Adam here is gonna be playing the role of your rotator cuff muscles. And this ass represents your deltoid muscles. If those rotator cuff muscles do their job, then your deltoids can move a significant amount of weight. Problem is, the problem is I guarantee you don't train them enough or correctly and that upward force you generate from doing something like a side lateral is gonna overpower those rotator cuff muscles. As you can see, if they don't provide an adequate level of stability, they're definitely gonna get impinged or tear or in Adam's case, get pink eye. I need you to drink this. The whole thing? Yeah, you got two hours. Now that you understand the inner workings of your shoulder, let's run through some tests to figure out exactly what's injured and more importantly, how it got injured in the first place because an MRI will tell you and pinpoint the exact muscle that has a tear or tendonitis or who cares? Because if you don't know how it happened, it's only a matter of time before you screw yourself up again. That's probably what they meant by stranger danger. Let's start out with the two biggest culprits of causing misalignment and impingement, your chest and lats. A common mistake I see a lot of people make and I did when I was young is having the idea that if I train my pull muscles as much as I train my push muscles, everything will equal out and I'll have perfect shoulder alignment. The problem with that is one of the primary functions of your pec is to immediately rotate your shoulders. So if your chest is overly tight, those pecs are constantly in a shortened position, then obviously that shoulder is going to be out of alignment because those little baby bitch rotator cuff muscles don't stand a chance against your tits. How we doing over there? <laughs> Pair that with the fact that when someone's training their pull muscles, they're usually just hitting their lats, maybe a little upper trap, and that makes things worse because that lat actually twists and attaches on the anterior side of your humerus right below your pectoralis major, and it's responsible for pulling that arm back and further tipping that shoulder forward. So on top of the fact they're neglecting the muscles that are actually responsible for pulling those shoulders back, their lats are in a constantly shortened position. How do you know? Because anytime your arms are by your side, they're fucking shortened. So unless you walk around with your arms in the air like a crazy asshole, they never get lengthened. Hence why most high level bodybuilders look like a long lost fucked up Ninja Turtle because they have such overly developed lats and chest that it actually shifts those shoulders forward. Those two muscle groups alone have now made it impossible for those low traps, those rhomboids, rear delts, and all of those rotator cuff muscles to do their job and pull those shoulders back. To test to see if it's your chest causing misalignment, I want you to lay on your back, make sure your hips are in a posterior tilt so your lower back stays in contact with the floor the entire time. First, by testing testing if there's tightness in the fibers that originate in the lower part of your sternum and your abdominals. By reaching both your arms back at a 130 degree angle, if your hands can't touch the floor, 
that's one of your problems. Next, we're gonna interlock those fingers behind your head and let your arms relax. If those elbows don't get close to the floor or if you notice that shoulder protruding up, then your pectoralis major is the source of your shoulder problems. And if you failed any of those other tests, it's safe to assume that your pectoralis minor is also a problem. But if you really wanna see it, lie on your back, put your phone above you, and if you notice those shoulders are drifting towards your midline, then put this on your list of shit to fix. Fucking dick. Because tightness here will definitely cause a problem due to the fact that it attaches to your scapula. As it shortens, it pulls that scapula down, causing that bone above your humeral head to scratch your rotator cuff like a fucking Sony Walkman. And don't be surprised if you find that one side's worse than the other. So how do you fix it? Well, you got some painful options to choose from. I would start out with some band work, like I showed in a previous mobility video where you set it up about eye level, wrap it around your shoulder, hand goes behind your back, and you work against it and PNF the shit out of it. But I'd also smash your tits on some balls, mimicking that same test we did for pectoralis major tightness, but now we're doing it face down and opening up on top of the ball. And when you find a knot or a bundle of misaligned fibers, stay there for a while. Start at the outermost part of your pec, closest to your shoulder, and work your way towards your sternum. But obviously, don't roll right on top of your sternum. That's the way an EMT would check to see if a hooker's dead or not. I would also start to incorporate deep stretches at the end of your chest workout. One of my favorite ways is a machine fly because you can get a nice deep stretch, focus on one side at a time, hold it for 30 to 60 seconds, and then match it on the other side. Where are we at? To test for tightness in those lats, you're gonna squat against the wall, put those hips in a posterior pelvic tilt so that lower back's perfectly flat, and with those arms fully locked up, you're gonna reach up and try to put those hands against the wall. If you can't, like me, those lats are fucking tight. Here's some of the things that have helped me make progress, because believe it or not, it used to be a lot worse. The first one is the simplest to set up and probably my favorite. Now I use a dip attachment because it gives me a little bit more leverage, but you can use any bar because all you're trying to do is smash your lat all the way up into your armpit, and once you find a knot, you move that arm around to work against it. Next, I would grab a band, make sure your shoulder stays depressed the entire time, and then lean into it to stretch your tricep, and most importantly, your lap. Lastly, I'd end your back day incorporating some sort of hang. Doesn't matter, wide, close, reverse, whatever you feel the stretch the most, is the one you should do. Now, all of that's gonna loosen up those prime movers that are causing that internal tilt of your shoulders, but you still need to take time and strengthen the muscles that are involved in pulling those shoulders back, and down. So you need to make sure you're taking time during the week to specifically target your low traps, your rhomboids, your rear delts, and, still good? And your rotator cuff muscles, because I guarantee one or several of them are the source of your midlife crisis. You see, each rotator cuff muscle has a distinct function. Some externally rotate, one abducts, another one causes medial rotation, but the thing is, they don't work individually. Think of them like the ultimate beetle clamp. They grab, they compress, and depress. And we could go through and test and narrow down which one of these individual muscles is causing you problems, but we don't need to because they don't work in unison, so you need to strengthen them all. Plus, for 99% of you, the reason you have shoulder pain is this little bastard right here. This boner right here, your acromion process, more specifically the space between, your subacromial space, if this decreases, then that little boner biting bastard right there is gonna rub up against the topmost tendon of your rotator cuff, your supraspinatus, and it's just gonna cause this constant loop of irritation, pain, and eventually end up in a tear. How do you know if this is you? Well, you're gonna feel the most severe pain when your shoulder's in abduction from 60 to 120 degrees. An abduction is just a side lateral. And I'm sure some people heard the word tear and they freaked the fuck out because they never actually had their shoulder looked at. But in my opinion, the best route to take if you don't know for sure is to work on strengthening those rotator cuff muscles because if it's not a full tear and it's just some sort of inflammation, irritation, or just a minor injury, then getting those muscles stronger to help stabilize that shoulder will actually fix your problem over time. So good? These are my favorite exercises for the rotator cuff muscles. To hit the ones responsible for external rotation, your teres, your infra, I like to use a little band like this and do high banded pull-aparts, but as I pull it apart, I also exaggerate the supination of my wrist to isolate it down to those muscles even more. To hit the one responsible for abduction, your supra, I like to use a band like this because this exercise actually hits three of the four rotator cuff muscles, so it pretty much gets the entire job done. With your hands in front of you, you're gonna start abduction of those shoulders, but it's not enough for those deltoids to take over and try to dominate the movement. It should just be enough to light up that supraspinatus. From there, you're gonna let those thumbs lead you into external rotation to bring that teres minor and infraspinatus. And for the last one that's responsible for medial rotation that you still need to hit because even though it's probably tight, 
it's tight because it's weak. You don't need a knee sleeve, you can use a towel, really anything. You just don't wanna tuck that elbow into your side because it's gonna put that humerus at an angle and put more stress on the joint. So grab anything and tuck it right above that muffin top, wrap that band around something and do medial rotations. Now you can go through and do all of that and still end up with shoulder problems due to the fact you have no thoracic mobility or dysfunction in your scaps. Don't you just wanna say fuck it, I'm gonna hire one of those contortionists that shoots apples with their feet at NBA halftime shows and have them teach me how to jerk off with my feet. The good news is the last thing we need to diagnose and fix are your shoulder blades because they work in tandem with your shoulder. As you raise your arm, if they don't rotate and get out of the way, they're gonna cause an impingement. And it's always either due to poor thoracic mobility or an underactive and underdeveloped serratus anterior. And we're not even gonna test because I guarantee you sit like an asshole all day and you've never specifically targeted your serratus anterior. For increasing thoracic mobility, I have two favorites. The first one reminds me of an airplane safety card where they have you put your head between your legs to kiss your ass goodbye as the plane crashes. Grab a stick, throw your elbows on a bench, and drop your head that's gonna stretch your lats and your thoracic spine. The good thing about this one is while you're down there, you can check to see if your favorite gym shorts have a perma scent of balls, but you can also walk those elbows in even closer and stretch out your shoulder capsule while you're there. Oh good, I think he's done. My other favorite is the banded keg stretch. It's the only one I feel like you can get enough leverage because the other foam rollers aren't big enough. I even have that steel one, it's good, it's hard as shit, but you can't really lay over top of it. This one, it's that perfect angle, put that band nice and low, pull against it, opens everything up. But make sure you're not extending through your lumbar because most people think they can do this one, but you have them tuck those hips and keep that lower back nice and flat and they have no thoracic mobility whatsoever. And lastly, the exercise you need to incorporate each week for your serratus anterior, you're gonna throw a foam roller on the wall, band across your wrist, you're gonna try to actively drive out as you push against the wall. If you wanna make it more difficult, which you're not ready for because it's fucking impossible, you do the same thing in a plank position on the floor. And if you wanna put on more muscle, I'd check out the new Full Gym Program 2.0. You're gonna recognize some of the deep extreme stretches we talked about today because we do them at the end of back and chest day, and hopefully you survive. Fucking pop. All right, let's see the masterpiece.